Up next, Dr. Ahmed Arif will talk about head-to-head -head surgical trials. Which makes show me the evidence. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak today. I think the main message here is that there's still a lot of work to be done here in terms of comparing our various MIGS procedures, work to be done you know, for us as uh, members of the American Glaucoma Society and as individual surgeons to critically assess um, our surgical results in, in meaningful and standardized ways. Uh, these are my disclosures. I'd like you to turn your attention to a review article which was published in the Survey of Ophthalmology uh, last year. This was a very comprehensive, well-written review article that looked at all randomized control uh, trial data, looking at our mixed procedures in English peer-reviewed journals, and also included observational studies with greater than one year of follow-up. Uh, the paper includes a number of um, really comprehensive tables that look at over uh, 3,000 eyes across 20 trials in which a variety of outcome indicators are investigated, including a uh, percentage of eyes that could achieve medication-free status at follow-up and uh, proportions of eyes that could achieve intraocular pressures at various targets. You know, one thing I like about that review is that they treat phacal emulsification as an intraocular pressure lowering procedure. And so, as we'll see, we have relatively uh, you know, few head-to-head uh, -head MIGS uh, trials, but we do have a number of trials that look at phacal emulsification in combination with our MIGS procedures versus uh, what we know to be an effective intraocular pressure lowering operation, which is phacal emulsification alone. This graph summarizes data that comes from uh, some of our FDA pivotal trials, looking at the eye stent inject, the Cypass device, which of course was withdrawn from the market and the Hydrus implant. Color coded here, you can see the active comparator arm in each of those trials with patients who received phacal emulsification alone. And here we can see our primary outcome, which was a percentage of patients that were able to achieve 20% intraocular pressure lowering from baseline, importantly, this is a washed out baseline as well as washed out uh, intraocular pressure at follow up after two years. You can appreciate that phacal emulsification alone is an effective intraocular pressure lowering therapy that was reinforced this morning by Dr. Rothman uh, looking at data from the IRIS registry. But you can also appreciate the incremental effect that we are able to achieve with our MIGS procedures when combined with phacal emulsification. And if you look at another endpoint here, just absolute intraocular pressure reduction from baseline, again, these are washed out numbers. Uh, you can appreciate that our mixed procedures are able to achieve an incremental benefit over phacal emulsification alone. So in terms of comparing classic, uh, you know, MIGS to MIGS head on, we're really limited to just one prospective trial in which uh, two of the uh, first generation eye stent implants uh, were compared to the Hydrus implant. We have a, a couple retrospective studies available to us with uh, follow-up greater than one year, both of which compared Kahook dual blade in combination with FACO versus eye stent in combination with FACO. The COMPARE study was really an excellent uh, and, and very uh, well-conducted study that was prospective in nature, multi-center, randomized in which 152 patients with early stages of open angle glaucoma were randomized to either standalone hydrus implant versus standalone uh, implantation of the first generation of the eye stent, two of these devices implanted in that operation. And it's important that these were standalone procedures. And so we are able to remove that beneficial effect of phacal emulsification from, uh, from the mix and from our analysis. Patients were washed out at baseline from their medications. And uh, originally the plan in this study was to again, do another washout at follow-up after one year. It turned out that the investigators in this trial were reluctant to wash out a good percentage of patients off of their medications in, in one of these treatment groups due to patient safety concerns. So alternate uh, outcome criteria uh, were used. The investigators uh, had a strict definition for surgical success which included no further glaucoma surgery. This included laser trabeculoplasty as well as phaco emulsification, intraocular pressure less than 18, and then no glaucoma medications. You can see that a high percentage of patients in this study completed their one-year follow-up uh, visit. 
Intraocular pressure was reduced uh, significantly from uh, baseline uh, in the patients randomized to the hydrus. The eye stent uh, intraocular pressure reduction did not meet uh, statistical significance, and there were actually no between group differences between um, the two groups in terms of intraocular pressures. There was a difference, however, in terms of medication usage. Uh, in both of the groups, there was a significant reduction in medication uh, usage at one year. However, uh, the uh, hydrus, uh, patients randomized to the hydrus implant uh, fared better. If you look at uh, responder analysis here in terms of percentage of patients who were medication free at one year, again, patients randomized to the hydrus uh, had a higher likelihood of being medication free uh, out to one year. Kaplan-Meier analysis is shown here using those strict success uh, criteria we showed earlier, and patients randomized to the hydrus uh, achieved higher survival rates uh, compared to the eye stent group at one year. So I think the compare data shows handedly that in terms of efficacy, patients randomized uh, treated with the hydrus implant uh, fared better than uh, with the eye stent. As we've come to expect with our mixed procedures, there are relatively few safety concerns in either of these patient groups, and there were no differences uh, between the two groups. Uh, I'd also like to take uh, some time to discuss this uh, paper, which was published in JAMA Ophthalmology last year. Uh, this was a meta-analysis of Cochrane review data. There are uh, a number of uh, Cochrane reviews that have looked at our um, MIGS procedures in a systematic way. This paper performed network uh, meta-analysis of the data that was derived from those Cochrane reviews uh, and looked at the proportion of participants who were drop-free post-surgery after these MIGS procedures. And so um, we're limited in terms of our head-to-head -head MIGS trials, but many of these MIGS procedures had an act, the same active comparator, which was phaco emulsification. And in that way, using network meta-analysis techniques, you can indirectly compare the various MIGS procedures. And that's what was done in this study. Um, these are figures that summarize uh, the data from that study and, and very consistent with the uh, compare study Using network meta-analysis techniques, you can rank some of these mixed procedures against each other. And when, when you do that, the hydrus implant did rank ahead of the eye stent, the cypass, as well as cataract surgery. I think we're running a little short on time, so um, I won't be able to get into these retrospective studies that compare the Kahook dual blade and FACO versus eye stent and FACO, but I'd encourage you to take a look at those, of course, we have to recognize the biases that are inherent in retrospective uh, designs. Uh, in terms of where to go from here, I think the availability of standalone MIGS procedures will make it easier for us to more readily and easily compare these different procedures together. Again, removing the effect of phaco emulsification. It's important to look beyond intraocular pressure and things like visual field, cost effectiveness, quality of life, and imaging. And these outcomes are already being looked at in, uh, in our trials, but just not in a uh, comparative way. Uh, for future studies, it'll be important to standardize our methodologies. I think adhering to the World Glaucoma Association guidelines is important. Um, and uh, among those guidelines, I think it's important to limit our biases by masking the IOP examiner from treatment assignment and using the two operator method for IOP examination.